Okay, hey everybody, this is Brett for Crypto Masteries, uh, this week's Crypto Mastery class, also from uh, M3 Active Trader, and uh, of course under our, our parent brand Moonstream. So welcome everyone to this today's session here. Today is June 20th, and um, kind of a quiet day in the markets here. You know, we can see Ethereum, Tether, not really doing a whole lot. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those off, and we can just focus on the uh, what's moving uh, interestingly, uh, lots of red, and uh, not surprising with the uh, recent news out last week with uh, the SEC attacking the uh, the crypto environment industry, uh, suing Binance and Coinbase. Bitcoin slightly up. Did see a nice little rally. Uh, Bitcoin likely to be one of the leaders in terms of not being considered a security. So I think that's where why we're seeing a lot of this fear in the marketplace, uh, interestingly, um, or not surprisingly, rather XRP down a bit, a lot of uh, speculation on when this uh, lawsuit will be settled uh, and in whose favor. So let's just turn this off. I think this is a sell the news type of event here. And so, you know, came right up to the 50 day exponential moving average and uh, is pulling back down. So no huge surprise there on XRP. This is a four hour chart, by the way. And I'll uh, move this over here. Let's go to a daily, see what uh, is happening here. The colors of the charts are off because we are so also have our volatility index on here. And in this class, we are going to go through uh, some more nuances on these crypto mastery indicators that we've created. And um, so you guys are familiar with seeing the uh, ERI. That's these arrows, the early reversal indicator. And... Um, the uh, early reversal oscillator here. So these coincide for those of you that want simple red arrow, green arrow, the more advanced version is this oscillator here includes a Keltner band and some other quantitative uh, algorithm work there that we've created. But um, in terms of that, it's also like this uh, TSI here, which uh, is not yet back above 20 though. We want to watch XRP for the next bounce potentially because we do have a bullish ERI and so um, the uh, signal line and trend indicator heading down, however, and the volatility index is uh, not uh, is sort of in the midline, not doing a whole lot. We'd like to see it coming up out of this lower level. And uh, just welcome everyone here. Alex, KS, Rennie, Lisa, David, Rick, Leslie. If you guys do have any questions, uh, I'll just open up the chat here. And so, um, but um, what I'm gonna also show you how to do once you have all of your indicators loaded, sometimes you might want to change some, add some, remove some, things like that. And just a reminder on how you can create or save rather a template. So you can go up under indicator templates here. And I've got a bunch of different ones here. I have the four horsemen, which is ERI, radar, and basically our EMAs, the ERI, TSI, signal, and trend. Uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, create a new indicator template for uh, the five here. So what do we want to call this? Uh, we've used the three kings. We've used the four horsemen. It's just kind of a way to remember what they are. But uh, I'm just going to say uh, all CM indicators or crypto mastery indicators. And now it's not all of them. We do have the course the uh, candlesticks uh, the dynamic candlesticks chart so maybe we don't want to call it all crypto mastery indicators we we'll just call it um a, you know top five say like that or top crypto mastery indicators and um so uh and as they have been here every week they have just started pounding a, a very loud construction hammer across the street right as we launch class awesome so uh anyway I hope you guys can't hear that so top crypto mastery indicators is now under this um, template. So we can always go back and load these and reload these. So the benefit of that is if you were to take any of these off and wanted to add them back easily, we could go under templates here and sort down and just scan for these. So where did this go? Top Crypto Mastery Indicators and the click of a button, there they are. Cool uh, time saving tip for you guys. The reason I want to show you that too is I want to turn off the all index here so we get our normal candlestick colors back, right? So there we go. So we have a bearish engulfing candle. It looks like pretty close, pretty close. I think that qualifies. Rejecting off the 21 day EMA on XRP. Um, it's not a, a big coin that we follow, but I was just launching that off of the. Um, uh, the uh, chart there that we had from here. So let's see what else is going on. Bitcoin, Bitcoin will, of course, look at 
scanning the um, crypto scape here, we've got a lot of these, you know, that were targeted by SEC as securities are down, but there's still good news and development coming out on these, like Polygon's doing a deal with Google. Maybe we'll look at some news here and see what we can find out. Uh, but uh, not surprisingly, a lot of these are down and in the red today. And, and Bitcoin very likely will see some profit taking uh, here because if we just jump uh, ahead a little bit, we have this sort of zone of resistance here. Could push up a little bit more, but um, you know we've got all red, sorry, all green on the radar except for the weekly. Uh, we do have we had this bullish ERI. I mean, look, guys, the chart doesn't lie. Our indicators nailed it. ERI is the early reversal indicator. TSI trend strength indicator going above twenty. So we'll, I'm going to jump over to our success checklist here just so we're on the same page because it really did call this bottom you know we were it's always kind of scary when these things trigger but we've learned to trust these indicators and of course if you're watching this on our youtube channel and you'd like to learn more about these you can go to uh, crypto mastery dot online and learn more about these indicators because when we see the eri the tsi the signal and the bell we've got a very good indication that um, we have a trend forming and follow through. So uh, I think we do push up higher here for the day on Bitcoin. And I would imagine Bitcoin dominance is up. The safer place is where money will flow. But, uh, you know, this was in retrospect in hindsight, which is always 2020, as we know. Uh, we bounced hard and off of this resistance zone right in here around that 25,300 level, which was so important to hold here. Really glad we see that. Uh, we are technically in a bit of a downtrending channel within a larger bullish uptrending channel that kind of kicked off here back earlier this year, end of last year. So, uh, you know, I think I, I do think we still have put in bottom, uh, but we'll look at a little bit more of this here in a minute and uh, see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill the camera, though, so you don't need to see me the whole time. Uh, actually, well, we're going to go back to some news first. Let's do that. A really interesting article that uh, I was reading this morning and pasted a uh, highlight of this in the uh, m3 active trader group and so about uh, kind of the volatile road to nowhere but the basically what we're looking at here in the summary is that even though volatility volume and realized values are at multi-year lows that we are um, indicating bitcoin apathy as uh, firmly in play typically bottom of bear markets is when apathy is at its highest and uh, you know we have a little bit of time to spend down in these regions. However, under the surface, hodlers have been uh, begun their classic slow, steady accumulation along these lows where the apathy is uh, high and with the halving now less than a year away. So just to unpack this a little bit, the uh, timeline of this is important and there's a great uh, visual down here below. I won't go through all of the detail, but um, uh, not that one. Not that one. Uh, these are these are pretty much uh, make your eyeballs hurt. There's a nice visual here, though. Hodlers are hodling and don't really get into on-chain metrics too much because it really reflects well enough in our charts and our indicators. We don't need to. And these guys are very often wrong, as you guys know. I uh, you know had my little square off with uh, the uh, editor of Bitcoin Magazine at Bitcoin 2022. He brought up some very fancy and impressive uh, on-chain metrics charts like these, suggesting we would not go below thirty thousand. And uh, as we know, we did. So here's the uh, here's the chart I was going to show you. So basically, bull and bear market durations, and in, uh, in the past, so we had eight hundred eighty-eight days, eight hundred eighty-one rather, seven hundred forty-two days uh, going into the twenty twenty-four high. And um, anyway, we can see how these have varied quite a bit. The last bull run was only 600 days, one of the shortest. The, 20, the 2020 to 2022 was only 600 days, which is uh, interesting. And, um, you know, I mean, what can we surmise from this? Just looking at this, these because, and I was having a good conversation with my friend, good trader Scott Phillips the other day. He said, we are basically just barely smarter than the average monkey. And uh, we look for patterns everywhere. And so a lot of things are self-fulfilling, but why not dive down that rabbit hole? What if we had this kind of pattern forming? Um, a longer, shorter, longer, shorter 
would that and could that suggest a longer bull run on the next run higher kind of a one two three four uh you know look um you know we had this brief one down here in 2019 but at any rate uh in terms of the the bull market and then the uh, bear market measure from cycle peak to cycle low and then we have the transition period which is what they're also talking about uh, past transitional periods lasted between 460 call it you know 459 days and 770 days suggesting that the patience of investors may be tested on the order of eight to 18 months until a new market all-time high is made okay so that's uh what we're looking at here are these transitional patterns so it's a little bit complicated uh you know we talk about the transitional and then the bull market but um you know we are just kind of kicking off the transitional period here and so that means that the time for the next bull market really kick off is going to be a little while more than likely, you know, unless uh, my outlier scenario plays out, which is uh, on trading view somewhere, which is it's looking less likely. I, I did say it was not likely uh, how uh, Bitcoin could hit 100,000 here fairly soon if we saw the trifecta of the um, uh, those three things, the um, Bitcoin, the bank runs and then um hyperinflation of the dollar, de-dollarization, and uh, a number of other things. But I, I don't think we're going to see that just yet. I think we do rally in July. But um, the, the bull run is more than likely going to follow the next kind of cycle here. And so we, you know, we've kind of calmed down into this trough here. We've started to push higher a bit. But I'd say we've got another, I hesitate to speculate, but probably coming into the end of the year, early 2024, when things really start to get interesting now that but the article really is talking about the smart money is starting to accumulate the hodlers are starting to accumulate because they know the patterns on these cycles and even if we do have another downturn you know this is that period of where we should start to head higher so this is an interesting article that you can find um it's on glass note if you want to search for it and uh you know uh, we don't normally get into this on this channel but Essentially, it says we're still kind of early in this recovery, and uh, this is the bull and bear market durations. So there's a lot to unpack here that I think would probably not want to get into. But percent of transitional trading range bound seventy eight percent. Yeah, they they really kind of overkill. It's really overkill. I understand this. I could explain it, but we don't have all day. And you've heard me say, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. And so what the charts are telling me here just to jump to a little different chart um i'm encouraged by this so we'll get to some news in a minute but we are now back above the 50-day ema we see the 21-day curving higher we have this little fake out here i was concerned that that level which had been previously strong support tested here in uh march of 2023 we had that strong bounce off of this and we've come down and we kind of were breaking down below this but it was also horizontal support so glad to see that held right but this is very encouraging you guys we want to see how today's candle closes because um again uh this uh this little candle here has the potential to be one of our favorite trading setups in all of crypto called the rocket uh, we described that in detail in our M3 Active Trader class. You can find out more about that at moonstream.io. Most of you are here live are already in the class. And uh, it's one of the benefits of being in the class. So we do push this class up on a replay to YouTube. But here, if we do close toward the high of the day, then we have a rocket. And those are really, really powerful indicators and generally indicate much higher uh, a pump here. And then how high could we go? We could push up to 28.8. I would say maybe a little below that, 28.5, upper edge of that modified Bollinger Band that we use. But uh, guys, it's looking very bullish here. I'm not uh, I'm not going to deny that. Uh, let's not look at this at the moment. We're in the middle of the cloud. So, you know, it's encouraging when we're not below the cloud on the uh, Ichimoku. Mm, no point in doing the um, candlestick scanner, but uh, I'll pull that up on a different chart. So what do we want to do here? Uh, in terms of this, Bitcoin is our North Star. We want to watch that as uh, the leader and most coins follow the leader. But, um, you know, again, with all the uncertainty out there and the reason ETH isn't following along is this, I guess I've stated, big question mark. Uh, the SEC had designated Bitcoin and Ethereum as not securities when they were both proof of work 
Ethereum has since changed to proof of stake, and that could that could create problems for Ethereum here, at least in the short term. Okay, so let's see. We have Bitcoin whales continue to accumulate as Bitcoin makes recovery plan. You know, all this news tells me what I'm already seeing and already told you. Look at this, guys. Bounce hard. Our indicators caught it. And I'm not sure why these aren't loading. So I'm going to, like we did before, I'm going to load that, reload this template. But I'm going to reload the four horsemen there. And there we go. So what do we have? We are in a, a number sequence on our trend indicator. And, and looky here, we have a break. We're kind of breaking out above. We're just, it's interesting. It a, looks a little different than this other chart here. And uh, that's a daily. This is a daily. We make sure they're both logarithmic because sometimes that throws things off. All right, they both are. Okay, maybe it's because I have to zoom out. So basically, I think when we break above this level, though, we've got some pretty nice upside. And I like how these moving averages are starting to turn. You know, guys, this might be a good time to pull up the Crypto Mastery cheat sheet, as it were. Uh, where is this thing? I know I have it loaded somewhere here, our traders checklist. Okay, so let's re-download that. And uh, you guys will put the links in the, if you're watching the YouTube, we'll put the link to get this free cheat sheet below. It does require using our indicators, but uh, these are the best I've ever used in 20 years of trading, and we've built them to be that way. So here we have, in terms of a check mark, checkbox on the trade we're looking at, let's give this a ranking. I know that uh, some of you sent in the chat earlier that you're getting a very high rating on this particular trade on Bitcoin. So let's have a look. Well, what do we have? Well, we have the ERI, early reversal indicator, check. I'm just going to jump right ahead with all this. And we have the TSI green and above 20 check. We have the signal line green. So let's I, I hop over here and just do these. So is the ERI, our early reversal indicator, showing a green up arrow? Yes, it is. And the ERI oscillator green line, these are going to be the same. So that's uh, why that says that. TSI green and above 20. Yes, it is above that 20 line. So important. Has the signal line turned from red to green? This would be a no. This would be a yes. I'm going fast because you guys already know this. So, wait a minute, where am I here? Uh, I have jumped to a weekly accidentally. Sorry about that. We will look at the weekly, by the way, uh, which is telling us something a little bit different, but that's okay. And uh, we have signal line green here. So that was a check. We also have our trend indicator showing a key and a bell. The key is saying, hey, a new trend is forming. The bell is the confirmation to buy. And the number sequence is where we follow along and it'll give us two take profit uh, recommendations here. The first dollar sign, which is on the fifth day, and the seventh day is a take profit bag of money. Those are great places to take profits and reevaluate the trade. So with that, do we also have, we're at a seven, sorry, three out of 19 score. Is the bell indicating? Yes, it is. So now we're at a four out of 19. Did I get all those? Yes, we did. And uh, is the trend indicator have a green midline? It does. Is there a bullish engulfing candle pattern? Um, let's take a look at that. We had one yesterday. So yesterday, that would have been a great score because we're seeing this push higher. So I would say we do have a bullish engulfing. It is really close there. Steve Nissen might argue with me and say that it is not technically engulfing, but I think that is it qualifies. Clearly, it's pushing higher. And so let's just say that there is. That would have been yesterday. Is, is the candle body at trend line support? Well, look at that. If we do we have the candle body at trend line support. We're pushing higher, looking like it might be a rocket. Let's just take a look at the uh, Bitcoin and one hour, four hour. If we can do that, we'll go back to four hour here and get to uh, Bitcoin there and get over to the right list here for the uh, crypto mastery list. So, you know, it uh, looks interesting and... Um, Maybe a little bit overbought on the four hour, but at any rate, uh, let's come back to what we were talking about here, get to the right charts. So what I was looking for there is, are we heading higher on a four hour? And we are. So what would that indicate on a daily basis? Anybody? If we push higher on this four hour, it looks like we may or mostly green, more likely that we get this rocket on the launch pad 
candles. So we want to look at that next. So you guys know what I'm talking about. You're getting excited because that's a great setup. Is the candle body at support? It is. Is the price above the 21 and 50 day EMA? It is. It's now above the 21 and the 50 day EMA. So this is getting more exciting, right, guys? So now we're at a score of eight out of 19, but we're not done yet. Is price above a rising support trend line? All right, let's look at this. And I would say, well, I mean, it is. This is that rising support trend line. When in doubt, zoom out. Let's see what we have there. And we already talked about that very important trend line here. So it is bouncing off of that. Okay, so uh, you guys, this is looking very strong right here. Uh, it is. Is it breaking above trend line resistance? Uh, it is trying to. Okay, so, you know, some would draw this along the, the candle body, in which case we are breaking above trend line resistance. And so, you know, I prefer to use the top of the candle wicks. Let me turn off the ERI so we can see that. Just to be safe, because we know these these prices can fake out. They can go up above. So we don't know yet. We need to see how prices close today. Uh, we've seen that run up to this trend line resistance and pull back once, twice, three times. If we can end toward the top of the day here, which it's looking like we're going to do on the four hour as of now, then we would be able to check both this and also the rocket on the launch pad. Again, one of our favorite indicators. What do you guys think? Uh, okay, thank you, Leslie, for the comments. And so is there a rocket candle? So the rocket essentially is a candle like this where the real body is above support, exponential moving averages or trend line support with a candle wick below, kind of the fuse of the rocket. And this is the rocket fuel. Here's another version of it which is uh, is a little bit different. I would say this qualifies because of all that. Look at all that rocket fuel. It's, it's a sort of a, it's not a silly analogy, but it's an easy one to remember. And uh, so we call this the rocket. So this is the rocket fuel. This is the fuse. And it has to be closing at or near the top of the uh, candle so that you can then light the fuse and watch that shoot up in the sky. The support can be a 20 or 50 day EMA trend line or other key level. And uh, so look, guys, uh, we are now at a score of 11 out of 19, almost unheard of. So if we go into advanced setups here, are there multiple ERIs? Look, that thing just popped up just as we're doing it. You guys must be buying up some Bitcoin right now, because right now, as of now, we are having a rock in the launch pad. And but the, what's the big caveat here? OK, you could go and place an entry and a trade. Um, I would say be careful. We want to get closer toward the end of the day so we don't have that pullback. But if we start pushing higher up into this range above 27.5, then this is a very, very bullish scenario. We're breaking trend line resistance, 21 and 50 day, turning higher, rocket on the launch pad. Guys, we have been waiting for this exact type of scenario for some time now. All right, we can look at multiple green ERI signals. I keep turning that off. Uh, we don't. That's okay. We have one, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, doubles are sometimes better, but not always. And so we don't have that. What is the next indicator? Higher lows on uh, the ERI oscillator. That's what we don't often look at. Uh, but since we, uh, that, these are advanced setups. We don't need to get into that. That's when they are sort of side by side and usually in a shorter time frame. I um we could make the argument of that, however, essentially higher lows on the ERI oscillator could make that argument. Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna say that that is that's a nuance of this because we came down below on the prior ERI cycles, came down to the zero point, bounced, came down and hit zero, bounced. This time we only came down around seven and eight on that ERI, so higher low. Okay, so we're going to say in this bullish example, when we can see hidden buyer strength based on higher lows of, of the oversold oscillator, regardless of price or trend. So you guys get that hidden buyer strength. That's, so we are with these indicators, we're following the footsteps of elephants and the elephants are stepping in with bigger trades. And that's what we're seeing with that higher low on that. So regardless if a price prints higher or lower, the ERI can show the true direction. Let's take a look back in here. So 
this is very important. So back in here, even though price was going down, this is bullish divergence when we saw the higher low down here and this bottoming and then the ERI. So that's a nuance most of you haven't seen before and worth paying attention to. That's why you really want to get your hands on the uh, this uh, trade success checklist because now we are at a score of 12 out of 19, almost unheard of. Guys, this is looking very bullish. Uh, now, these are bearish setups. So in terms of the the best uh, signals we have some more other multiple signals on a single candle so we um we do have that with the looking at the uh, er the rocket and an eri let's see uh let's see um well it's uh, we it's multiple signals so it's a rocket it's above the 21 day that's sort of inherent but uh what this was meant to be is something like bullish engulfing candle or rocket and launch pads so we don't really have that we sort of had that yesterday so i think we're it's a bit of a stretch to check that one off but i multiple signals you know we what else do we see here so we've got a rocket we're on the 50 day ema and do we have so um i th you know we're above the trend line i mean that's kind of a gray area uh, and I think we, we, I won't check it off. You could go either way in that. Is there a descending overhead resistance? So that wouldn't be a positive one. So basically the, the all the bullish ones are checked. This is almost a perfect score, 12 out of 19. I, we are going to rework this for a bullish score, bearish score. So that uh, it's a little bit more clear, but, um, but you know, if you're watching this, uh, I really like what I'm seeing here and so four hour bullish daily we have a weekly now so the only caveat is before we kind of start diving into this i have been i have been saying it's time to dollar, start dollar cost averaging over the last week or so so those of you that have are happy we uh but let's look at a weekly chart on our indicators i'm sorry we totally skipped the news but there's you know the, there's this is more exciting at the moment all right so on a weekly basis uh interesting candle here it's um you know this is a reversal but really look at this we're we're getting a golden cross here in well technically golden cross is 50 over 200. Uh, i really like the 21 and the 50 on all time frames so we're getting we're back above the uh the 20 and the 50 week moving averages exponential moving averages that's very bullish we can see how it rejected back in here we can see how it adds you know it, that's a great barometer of the health of these markets below the 21 and 50 is a bearish now we're just getting back above it to the bullish side so um you know on our tsi we are heading down uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean we drop i mean we could see a pullback here in the daily see this continue to drop and bounce we would love to see bullish on the weekly TSI because then we have these more sustained longer term uptrends. But I like that it's becoming closer to oversold. So get ready, everyone. Mark my words, get ready. We are going to be very soon, I'd say in the next two, three months, it's going to be July, I think, before we really take off. Uh, we might see a little bit of a pump here, but we want to see as this TSI come down on these range, go down in the red below this area here and then come back up out of that 20 line that's when we're going to see the bigger follow-through and the institutional uh, support and there will be some news that says hey look at this everything's bullish again uh and that's what i watch that's what i trust because essentially what we're watching is what are the big boys doing and you can do that by watching the footsteps that they've been doing. So we've got a little time. We're going to wait and see on the weekly. What does this tell me on the daily that I would you would want to be taking some profits on any bounces here? And uh, but let's say let's take out. Let's look at some different price targets on Bitcoin. And let's redo this uh, Fibonacci thing. And how did I have that drawn here? down into this range okay so essentially what this shows let me turn up that eri this is, uh this is a fibonacci on the market cycle high to those market cycle lows around fifteen thousand six hundred back in november and um i'll put on the 382 briefly i think we did look at that it wasn't uh anything that meaningful it it can be i'll leave it on for now but really what we'd be looking for is a push up to the 50 percent level around forty one thousand. but i maintain that if we break above 32k 
that uh, we should push to 50 48k to 50k fairly fast and i'd say by october maybe september why that's golden pocket retracement uh these things are somewhat self-fulfilling but uh that would be that would sort of fit the narrative i would expect up in this range and then roll back maybe it's in this forty two thousand dollar range you know we have to wait and see and see how this uh, trend channel plays out i think i'll draw that a little bit differently but um yeah so we are in a nice kind of new upward trending channel and that's why it's so important that we hold right here you know it looks as of right now it looks as if we are and so we had that little fake out came down and, and retested support at twenty five thousand. Guys, we 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 could be at a major, major inflection point. You don't see me say that. You don't hear me say that every week. You usually hear me say we have to wait and see, wait and see. So uh, we have to wait and see. But just for a few days more, because uh, we have this confluence, this uh, this uh, wedge forming here and um, and inside of this upward trending channel. And it looks to me. Even though volume is very low, though, that is something to pay attention to. Back in here, we had a major push higher. Uh, that does concern me a bit. Low volume on, on this. But if we start to break out of this zone and the volume returns, we, we could push up to this 38K uh, range fairly quickly. And again, back up to 42K would be that Fibonacci retracement. So um, I almost nailed it, uh, Alex says. I'm not sure... What do you mean, Alex? Almost nailed what? Um, I think you were the one who suggested uh, the trade success. And so that, yeah, you were the one who said that. So yeah, you almost nailed it. So great observation there. And um, if you guys would like to get a hand, uh, get a copy of this, there is a, a link that I believe I can, we will put it in the, the notes, in the show notes, rather. It's Let's see, uh, strange. I guess I can just put the uh, the link here. I'll put it in the chat. I'm, I'm assuming everyone watching this live already has this. And hopefully you can see that if you, that link will be clickable on a replay if you're watching the YouTube channel. By the way, uh, we're going to be doing more YouTube shorts, just uh, a lot of short things on YouTube on a daily basis. So if you do like what you're seeing, hit like, subscribe, and we're going to unpack alpha every day here for you guys. And so with that... Uh, that's basically what we wanted to look at there. Let's uh, just finishing off any news. Uh, Bitcoin's pushing up here, right as I was saying, right? So we're, we're going to keep an eye on that rocket scenario. And again, uh, sorry, if you wanted to find out more about these indicators, mainstream. Uh, sorry, it's uh, cryptomastery.online. And, uh, and then if you'd like to learn more about our weekly uh, class m3 trader and get to access to all of these things you go to moonstream.io slash m3 short little commercial there sorry about that and the uh, summary summary conclusions risk self capital we're not going to dive in any of this nonsense we don't need to uh that will um it's not nonsense but we don't need to uh, dive into that so moving right along here a little bit of news here bitcoin whales accumulated 3.5 billion worth of bitcoin amid the market turndown that's worth noting and uh it's quite a bit so you know i think the whales are paying attention right now and likely buying and um uh, i had also heard something around about you know china may be close to unbanning bitcoin and the somebody had shared uh i think sam i think sam you shared a sam here today uh a, a short clip of you know chess versus checkers and so uh, china's playing chess here you guys uh, the banning of bitcoin is not that they want to ban bitcoin uh they've been accumulating it and um there's uh that would be a great play for them to suddenly you know accumulate a lot of bitcoin and then unban it and that would certainly send uh markets higher i think that's in the cards here and so uh there's a lot of accumulation happening i would try to get ahead of that not investment advice and uh so we could cover a little bit more here we do typically look at a little bit more news and um we can look at uh, markets pro here from coin telegraph good source for that we also look at uh, crypto panic and the daily hodl we're making pretty good time here uh i don't have this queued up here because sometimes the articles come in breaking in, in real time 
Uh, is the analyst, uh, all these analysts, uh, unveils Bitcoin price target 2025. Uh, I'll give you mine. It's uh, 205,000. Let's see, let's see what this guy says. And this government's pretty big. This is my to Stanley talking about tech sector point gains. And he's just talking, okay, lots of noise. Uh, Kiyosaki Perma, he's he's always sounding the alarm. More banks about to fail. Uh, let's look at this because uh, you know I'm concerned about the commercial real estate market uh, could could plummet and implode things and scare the pants off people. Uh, I think that shoe hasn't dropped yet. A lot of vacant office buildings and um, big companies that are spending hundreds of thousands of months uh, mo a month in leases and all their workers are at home. There's nobody coming to the office. Uh, I've seen it. It's, it's it's ominous. It's a bit scary. So how does that land? I don't know. Let's see what this guy says. Hey, there's nobody that I know. He he. I think he's I think he's off. He's gonna pick the date and the time, uh, and the price. Okay. Well, I mean, I think uh, 155,000. Actually, let me. I, I can pull up the chart where I have. Uh, estimated that and i have to pull it up on another side uh, normally we don't look at this chart but i'll pull that up here and i got monitors all around me guys so if you see me looking everywhere that's why all right bear with me and i'm going to do this and uh, i've got a uh, different chart i'm looking at so the one bitcoin yeah this one right here great all right here it is so I think this is a trading view playable. So I said this a while back that the there's a possible scenario to 100,000 Bitcoin in 2023. Uh, this year is certainly still possible, but um, the uh, if I hit play, the, so this was a couple of weeks ago. I, I was it's, so far it's playing out though. Look at this; it's come right back down to this zone where I said it would, and this is a fractal pattern overlay of 2019. This range in here so we've pulled back if we do rocket higher from here then we're on path for that 100k bitcoin sometime in later in the year it's not projecting but i also have 155k bitcoin that's the 2.618 you know that would be but i think there's i think 205,000 is also 210k uh is is possible so he might be right at 157 he's doing a fibonacci uh, on that uh clearly so um you know i mean that's not it's not out of line i'm mostly uh on board with that as a possibility uh i think it'll hit before that I, before then by by september 2025 i think we're higher so uh, let's see we'll see who's right you guys remind me and uh and uh send me uh, frozen steaks if i'm right and <laughs> so anyway things get ugly on this we could go back to 70k all right, we've unpacked that. All right, so interesting, interesting concept. Kiyosaki says bank failure is about to fail. One mortgage lender is on the ropes. And let's see. Loan Depot. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, all right. I don't know why. Let's see. Lost 600 million last year. Cut this many jobs. There's, so, there's so, something more happening. The economy is not okay. And big companies, if big companies fail, then banks are more likely to fail. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's his new news. Regional banks more. So we could have a scare here. Let's see. Be careful. Wouldn't extend, believe anything Biden or Powell or Treasury Secretary Yellen says. So always good advice. Kiyosaki warned of an impending crash in the real estate sector. <clears throat> yeah, I think we, we, I think we pull back. Uh, if because of some on yet to be named boogeyman, this could be it. And uh, then we would see more buying come in. I, I don't think we take out the $16,000 low. Uh, you know, I think that's the low is in. We could be tested. We could. We also have a CME gap. It's around 20K. But right now, I think we're bullish. We push higher from here more than likely. So uh, he's suggesting, of course, uh, Kisaki always recommending buying gold in the precious metals and Bitcoin. Uh, but he's saying greatest real estate crash ever. 28 with 20, 2008 was a great financial crisis. A 2023 will make 2028 look like nothing, he says. In 2019, office towers in San Francisco were hot. Yeah. Same thing. The, the empty buildings uh, lose value. 
and then we see lending evaporate you know if any of you have businesses lines of credit things like that and you have you're planning on refinancing don't uh, be complacent they clamp down on those things we have some commercial real estate here in Washington DC thankfully you are just about to uh, sign a new uh, two new leases because uh, at any point the bank could say hey your loans due and um we're not going to renew it scary stuff especially if you don't have tenants these big office buildings that have no paying tenants in them they're in trouble the banks own them and if they go insolvent and the banks don't like to own real estate that's not generating income uh, more bank failures could happen what will cities do with office buildings homes for the homeless get the gold silver bitcoin interesting to note as well all right well uh what do you guys think any uh any other news you guys want to talk about let's see you guys have um some things to say let's see uh Alex uh, you might have to download the PDF version so it's interactive and open it in a PDF uh, browser yeah the download sometimes you have to download the PDF file and open that up that should work let's see I see a bunch of comments here uh David said I heard something about the volumes being related to the fact that there's very little Bitcoin sitting on exchanges yeah there's um yeah there, there's a lot of people there's a um uh, what is it scarcity um it's not the right word the liquidity is sort of not crisis but there's a lot of coins off of the exchanges and that means there's less bitcoin to buy on exchanges and that's because the people don't trust exchanges right now binance saw huge outflows and um coinbase is being sued gemini has remained unscathed so far and uh, they have their own issues they're dealing with from the Genesis uh, and the 800, 900 million that they lost there from GBT, uh, uh, GBTC and um, Barry Silbert and uh, Digital Currency Group. So, you know, no one has gone unscathed in all of this. Uh, interesting times. Uh, so, um, and I did post something in the Active Trader group this morning about the other side of the Black uh, BlackRock news that maybe isn't so positive. But uh, end of the day, accumulation is happening. Low volume. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Little Bitcoin on exchanges right now, relatively little, but still buying pressure. Let's see. A lot of, uh, okay, so uh, David says lots of commercial paper coming due for refi. So uh, as I was saying, I didn't know that, but um, yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, these banks, you know, the banks that are most, especially regional banks, if they are suddenly in trouble they don't have any they don't have to refinance your loans uh, any of you holding commercial real estate so um, go with the bigger banks make sure to be nice to your banker but even those relationships can change banks can be acquired and then loans are called uh it's um uh, I've I've seen I had a friend early on who was a real estate millionaire back in the 2018 2008 crisis actually I think it was earlier but um had a million dollars in real estate a banker said refi no problem crisis hit didn't refi lost it all <clears throat> so anyway let's see KS says Hong Kong is technically China correct and uh latest news indicate Hong Kong is making significant efforts to establish itself as a major world crypto hub uh gee uh interesting they're also publicly escalating deployment of their CBDC. Yeah, China's way ahead of us on their CBDCs. I, I posted a video of Mark Yusko uh, talking about this. Uh, they're ahead of us <clears throat> on CBDCs. And in, in many ways, uh, they may have been planning this game of chess, uh, purposely creating their own economy for the sake of having the reset earlier impacting everyone else. But they are they are printing money. Uh, the money printer is going burr over in China right now, and they're seeing uh, evidence of that. Whereas here, we're not. We're still tightening. So what is China up to? Uh, I can only speculate. They have a population crisis, but um, they are fighting very hard to um, kind of win some win dominance now. And there's a whole conversation about where is the uh, the reserve currency headed? We don't have time to get into that, but here to continue KS's comments. So while China could technically uh, keep Bitcoin crypto restricted out of mainland China, they could, they may not, they may flip-flop on that. Uh, as well to do appropriate social credit scores, citizens could travel to Hong Kong and trade there. Yeah, I mean, that's a you know, bit of work to do that, but similar to how they do offshore casinos, sure. Uh, the In Singapore, the 
the Marina Sands Casino. I've been there. Uh, it's one casino, three buildings, giant ship look like thing on the top and a pool. Beautiful hotel. Uh, that one casino does more volume than all of Las Vegas. And that's because the Chinese and all over Asia flies there to do their gambling. Uh, and they don't have the, the the gambling is not even nice. It's not uh, pretty waitresses and uh, all you can eat buffets. It's uh, it almost looks like a stock exchange. It's uh, but anyway, Singapore is a great place. Marina Sands. Um, yeah. So that's what happens. People travel there, as you're saying, travel to Hong Kong to trade their crypto. Maybe commercial real estate in the U.S. may be under threat. I was just saying that. Yeah. And and uh, I, I think that that's bubbling uh there's there's um i don't it's quick aside uh, family uh it's, it's family close family member uh relative, relative of the family works for a large fortune 100 company right over the bridge in arlington beautiful office spaces uh used to have 600 people in there they are multiple floors of this building there's nobody there uh, and and they've all gone home they're paying out the nose for this, and that is not good if profits are down, because their particular service, where was the company is Gartner, uh, is not particularly um, uh, res uh, sorry recession resistant. Uh, their customers are software companies, and as a SaaS founder, I know I wouldn't necessarily need to be paying for that right now. Those are things that get cut. So, anyway. Uh, so Alex, here you got your screen back. Okay, good. KS saying regional banks are the blood of small and medium businesses, operating lines of credit. With the recent collapses, regionals are much more judicious about lending to anyone, right? So, possible small business fallout. Translate small, medium business stagnation, contraction. Correct. Uh, for some that are under heavy debt load and unable to refinance, builders with massive underwater commercial property uh portfolios may have difficulty refinancing let's move this over you may not be able to read this chat in the screen share and it might appear black to you guys but uh, much better than the ads china has real estate crisis as well david adds and uh let me just finish this uh so basically some are heavy debt load unable to refinance massive underwater commercial portfolio properties may have properties uh portfolios may have difficult refinancing with their debt comes to for refund refinance yes um so what does this also mean you guys epic uh, opportunities coming for buying commercial real estate. Uh, somebody I know through social media only, but um, you may have seen this guy, uh, Manny has uh, an amazing car collection, Bugattis, et cetera, but he's, he's made all his money in commercial real estate and buying distressed assets in times like these. He's sounding the alert for this is the best buying opportunity ever. Uh, you know, if you can acquire commercial real estate, uh, specifically medical mixed use buildings, has to have ample parking, uh, put a fresh coat of paint on it. Um, he <clears throat> He's done very well with that. So anyway, but I digress. Let's get back to our charts here. But uh, let's see. Yes, we're mostly uh, small banking banks need to be lending stay in business, but large banks do not have to lend literally as much in this climate at least significantly reduce their exposure or just sit tight. So again, tr more trouble for regional banks likely. While the regionals are hanging on by their teeth, they need to be lending in the majority of significant client bases, small, medium businesses. So we are likely to see more MNAs, mergers and acquisitions of regionals by large national banks, right? JP Morgan's probably going to be there buying them all up. Okay, oh, let's get back to the charts, shall we? I think we covered most of that. Uh, we have some, let's check crypto panic. Mm hmm. Not a lot going on the crypto lawsuit. So or XRP lawsuit. We don't need this. Uh, we've unpacked that. We've uh, already talked about that. Anything else? Short term trends. Bitcoin vulnerable. Expected rate hikes. Uh, trending news. Let's see. CZ says Binance has issued a cease and desist notice against Night. Uh, scan. Okay. Nothing there. All right. Um. We are, we got about 10 minutes left in the class. You guys, what do you want to talk about here? We could uh, look at some movers and shakers, but uh, looky here, we just, we have this looking very strong. This is the rocket on the launch pad, you guys. And what I would say is watch, let's see, it's 1 p.m. Eastern. Market closes, technically uh, closing candle in seven hours. And, um, 
if we can hold this level, very bullish for follow through. You might want to look at some some uh, altcoins or even buying Bitcoin uh, and uh, for some follow through. This could be an excellent time to be buying Bitcoin. It's all going to come down to this line here, but I like where we are. And so, for example, let's take a look at this. In contrast to this pump right here, which I don't like these pumps because they typically retrace, which it did. What I like is slow and steady, get above the 20 line, okay, hit some resistance on the 50, now firmly above the 50, 50-day 50 EMA. We've seen what can happen down in here to sort of put in this type of you know support and then push higher now we have this re this resistance line here that um may cause some trouble but i'm going to re i'm going to move this let's see i mean my squiggly line here is somewhat followed i mean i drew it back in here and we came down we pushed up it's a little bit extended but let's redraw that and just uh you know he's here here. So something like this is what I would like to see. So what does that mean? It means, you know, we come, maybe we reject here on the trend resistance, come down to the 50 day support, push through, come back down and retre uh, retest that trend line and turn it into support. This is sort of ideal wishful thinking here, right there, so, and then push higher. So that that's what I'd like to see. Now, uh, we could very well just push power on through but you know i i would i would say we could get up to this range and then come back retest but then it's off to the races and we're pushing higher and again i do like this trend line upward trend channel rather uh I like that quite a bit what do you guys think so in in simple terms we should have another couple days of follow through now should is tricky we have the bell we have the one and the two it's this trend line resistance that is both good and bad it's good if we can flip above it and i think we do whether or not we sort of come down in here bounce around and then break through i do i do think that's in the cards uh barring any other news all right let's take a look at ethereum here and just kind of go down through here uh let's see i had drawn this arrow about a week or so ago started to break down here's that fake out again and um you know got back down into this is what uh, i had as my bitcoin buy or ethereum buy zone Let me get rid of this it's this triangle here so i'm just going to move that triangle out sorry guys you got all these indicators so the you know it got into my buy zone it was a good time to pick up some more ethereum and then you know, we're sort of seeing this kind of a pattern. Just, I don't think it goes straight up, but I, I think ETH, if we can hold here at 1700, what are our indicators? Tell us we have an ERI. That's good. That's bullish. We have the trend strength indicator just coming up above that 20 line. Uh, this line here, a bit of concern. I want to see how we close. If we can come up around 40, I'd say we're bullish on Ethereum. We have the signal line starting to come across. Uh, keep an eye on Ethereum. If that goes green, and then if we get green on the trend, Bitcoin will lead this. If we push higher in Bitcoin, this will push higher as well. And, um, you know, I, uh, uh, I am glad I did not sell. I was thinking of selling some of my Ethereum. We, I bought into this rally here. It pulled back sideways, sideways, came in. I was going to sell half to buy back lower. But these fake outs are so common in the markets. Uh, I had a feeling that we'd push higher. <clears throat> and it does seem that we might hear from here. So. Um, Weekly basis, a little bit jumbled. We don't need to look at that. Uh, what else do you guys want to look at? Anything? Uh, let's see. How about uh, some of our micro caps? Let's see. I had Filecoin up here. I'm not sure why we had Filecoin up there. Uh, Phantom Coin should probably be in that chart. But uh, we had some micro caps we were watching. Let's see. Oasis. These were big movers last week. Uh, I don't see any reason to keep these on the chart. These are uh, below the 21 and 50 day moving averages. So uh, we've got Polygon Matic far down here. Um, I would watch for the TSI to get back above 20 here. Got a signal line about to go green. Let's take a look at uh, Polygon here and see what we have. Any support zones around here that might indicate time to accumulate? Yeah, kind of. I don't know. Polygon, I'd, I'd be careful with these. 
I would be careful with these. Something doesn't seem quite right. This 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 might go sideways and drop again. Uh, if it double bottoms out 35 cents in this range and our indicators go green, that's great. But our radar is almost all red here. So I would avoid uh, avoid that. Again, uh, the radar is a great way to see at a glance. So XRP uh, looking green, moments while it's mixed. And uh, kind of waiting. I wouldn't touch that one until we know. Uh, more about the SEC verdict. Solana continues in this downtrending pattern. Uh, really not much to see other than we do have the, okay, well, look, Solana's looking bullish. The chart itself does not look great, but we do have uh, an ERI. We have a TSI breaking above 20. We have signal line going green and we have a key. So you'll want to watch, let's watch Solana here because if we get the bell and we start kind of getting up above this region, that would be more bullish than it is now. But so Solana is one to keep on your radar and here's why it's oversold on the weekly basis also. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to put a uh, an alert on this. A crossing up the 20 line on the weekly basis on this TSI. Because that, when we have the daily weekly coinciding coming up out of oversold zone, we can have a powerful rally and push higher. So there is a strong resistance trend line right there. But um, uh, I just, we, we know better than to ignore our indicators. So it's, uh, I would kind of wait and see, maybe give it another day and see if we get this uh, a bell signal and then we could see a nice push higher on that. And, you know, a base hits are the name of the game here at uh, at $18, sorry, $16, even up to this trend line resistance, 26%. That's a nice base hit. All right, so let's see. Uh, some more comments here. SEC did not name Ethereum. Uh, yeah, I know that. It named Matic, Sol, a number of other ones. But they may. Uh, my point is, uh, Ethereum, they could come back and say that it's it is a security because it's proof of stake now. So that's the danger there. Um, but yeah, no, SEC did not name Ethereum on the lost lawsuit. So FTM, they can take a look at here. Uh, what did I do wrong there? FTM, let's see. Do Kwan is crypto. I want the crypto version. FTM dollar, Bitfinex, uh, they're all going to be about the same. I'll just use Binance here. <clears throat> so uh, Phantom Coin bearish ERI. So early reversal indicator bearish. So it's uh, you know not a bullish scenario. Kind of conflicting here. We've got the uh, TSI green, but kind of rolling over uh, green. And it's it's conflicting. I think the problem here is that we have, it's in a downward trend. We have this 21 day as resistance. I would, uh, when in doubt, stay out. It's not bullish enough, in my opinion. And this is one of those rare examples, by the way. And I had asked, do we ever see this? A rare example where we see a key and a bell, but the midline is red. Important nuance there. So that would disqualify that trade in my book. So if we come down in here, I wonder if I can re refresh this. So in terms of the uh, trend indicator showing a bell. It might have a bell. Does the trend indicator have a green red line? And it does not. So this is one of those rare indicate uh, situations where they don't. Where was it? Uh, Phantom coin. Yeah. So so keep that in mind. We want the midline to be green, like back here. So Phantom Coin's not a uh, candidate at the moment, uh, I would say. Uh, and even though it's tiny, it's it's forming a bearish engulfing candle. So I think I think Phantom comes back down, but I'd watch for another bounce down here. Look for your next bullish ERI. Uh, and again, if you're uh, just watching this and you like the indicators, you can learn more at moonstream.io slash M3 for our active trader class. Get the indicators for free or at cryptomastery.online. So back to what we're watching here. H bar, somebody said H bar. We've got time for maybe one more. All right, let's see. H bar tether on BitMEX. All right, looks good enough. All right, um, 
Uh, interesting. I don't know what they do. A bullish engulfing candle here. Hitting resistance at the 21 day moving average EMAs, but uh, the TSI is green moving higher, signal green turning higher. We have a key and a bell. It looks pretty good, David. Uh, let's. Uh, so, usually when I get to this point and I say looks good, then I look for reasons why it isn't good. What did I miss? Is there anything bad here? So, we'll zoom out a bit. Uh, I have some support in this region. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it would be worth, you know, not financial advice, but uh, that's a reasonable trade and take. Because of our indicators, we don't have an ERI, though. We, well, we had the ERI back here, as we see on the oscillator. So I, I think it's interesting, but uh, for me, I don't know. That doesn't, that chart's not as nearly as nice as Bitcoin. I know that uh, these cheaper coins are, can look great. Well, here's what I would suggest. Wait till closing today. If you still see a, a bell here, because sometimes we'll have a late day sell off and these indicators will repaint as they should because it's no longer valid. If that bell goes away, no longer valid. But you have that midline going green. And uh, as with anything, I don't recommend going all in on these. When you dollar cost average into a position, smart traders build positions. They don't go all in and go all out. So you could say, here's my stop loss. You might buy some here. But, you know, we generally look for a three to one risk reward ratio. So where what would your, would your target be on this? You can either tighten your stop loss. You know, that's that's certainly doable, but um, or raise your profit target. So those are two things you can do uh, in this case. If you were to do it like that and give yourself a little wider stop below the candle bottom yesterday, you're still at a four to one risk reward ratio if you think it can bounce up into this uh zone here which it, it might you know and you could always add to your position if it comes up creates a rocket on the 21 day or the 50 day ema and then add dollar cost average into a position like that uh yeah see matic and saw wild cards until the sec acquisitions resolve one way or the other fair uh let's see ethereum they know the main players they could potentially get at them yep yeah, that's the other thing, you know, is um, they could make an argument Ethereum was a security because uh, there's a they behind it. Bitcoin is a purely decentralized and nobody knows who Satoshi is and, and or are who the members are of the Satoshi clan and whoever that entity is hard to go after them. So it kind of does make Ethereum possibly a target and uh, Solana, not so much. Right. But um. I don't know, you know, um, that's it's a good question. All speculation indicators would show where how these markets will move before anything hits the news. Yes, exactly. Uh so so in that case, you're right, KS. I just that chart of Solana does look encouraging, but you are pointing it out, it is it is risky. So I would uh you know for swing trades worth worth um keeping an eye on that, but um you know, it does concern me a bit that we have the 2150 day and this trend line resistance there. Uh, you know, often it'll push up to these and roll over and go down. And, and that's the danger with Solana. So, you know, I'm not suggesting going and buying Solana, you know, paper trading possibly. I think we have some paper trades open, by the way. But uh, right now, uh, the leaders are going to be Bitcoin, Ethereum. All right. So flip side of Ethereum, rumor is that many U.S. Congress and other big players are heavily long Ethereum. Okay, interesting. Uh, what is Nancy Pelosi doing? <laughs> so she's uh, got her had her finger on the pulse. Anyway, I'm kidding. But so the SEC may either be giving them time to get out or keeping it up as too big to fail, too important for. Yeah, I like the second part of this comment, KS. You know, not too big to fail, but too important for wider strategic plans. Okay, you CBDC rails, interesting comment. Yeah, who knows? Who knows what the big plan is? Um, that's interesting comment. You know, the CBDCs, would they build their own or build it on Ethereum? Maybe there's a win-win. Um, I don't know. The government likes to build everything themselves, rightly, rightfully or wrongly. So if you remember uh, the Obamacare website that they spent uh, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars on and crashed repeatedly rather than I could have gone to Fiverr and hired a website, the dev and probably done a better job. 
<laughs> and run it on Amazon uh, Web3 or web services. So uh, David says, ETH also talking about making validators 2K ETH rather than 32K ETH. Um, do you mean for running your own node? I, I haven't heard about that, David, but um, okay. Okay, that's cool. Well, um, yeah, I, I mean, that would certainly uh, open that up for more nodes and more validators. That would be good. More decentral, more decentralization, more reason to, uh, what am I saying? No, it eliminate. Uh, oh, okay. I misread that. I thought it was exciting to know. So you're saying it would be 2000 ETH versus 32 ETH. So it would minimize the validators. All right. Well, then um, I, I don't know why they would do that. Actually, that would make it more centralized. So um, I don't what is your take on that? I haven't un I haven't heard that. There's so much to uh, keep on top of. Again, show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. Uh, I, what I can tell you is it, it hasn't really affected the price of ETH at all. And if anything, it's looking bullish from here as of now. I mean, I think and I have had this arrow drawn since June, uh, early June. Sometimes I move these around a bit, fair enough. But but you know, look, it's just not doesn't take a rocket surgeon to uh, to know and sort of develop a, a feel for these markets here. Bottoming here on support seventeen hundred. Could it roll over? Certainly, but it feels to me more bullish. So uh, the cost of the nodes, uh, although it's just a, let's see, ETH also talking about, are they talking about that publicly, David? I don't know. You, you know, that, that's where we kind of get into the so what factor. Does that, does that make a big difference in the value and the future value of ETH and the utility and adoption? Prices will move higher with more adoption, retail adoption, and uh, also with institutional and and uh, bigger investments from hedge funds and sovereign wealth funds and et cetera. But uh, we need meaningful, positive regulation for that to come about, uh, you know, for these big pension funds, right? You know, sovereign funds come in for the most part. Um, all right. So anyway, well, uh, thanks, you guys. That's all we really have time for. I guess, uh, you know, we could pull up our we had some open trades in our paper trader. So let's just see what we have there. We our uh we had kucoin the 3s short i don't know we don't want to keep that open necessarily although we have a bullish eri on that that's on uh, near uh i'm just going to close it close that trade because i don't want to be on a short you know the, the here's here's a lesson with this trading is just dangerous because you know you can um become complacent with trades and forget you have them open and then you sort of have this uh uh you know oh it's going to be okay yeah, and you have to be really careful having your stop losses using three commas and um uh sorry guys i'm trying to uh get out of this trade so maybe i just hit that so close position now let's clear this out a bit kucoin we have ajix short uh we're not short on ajix so close that small loss we didn't take big positions on these. All these shorts we want to be out of. And then it looks like uh, one on Lena, which was long. And I don't know. Uh, it's sort of sideways. It's just none of these are particularly attractive. I think what a better trade for us would be. Let's do this. Let's uh, put some money. Let's put some virtual money where our mouth is. Uh, I feel strongly in this Bitcoin trade. Very nice chart set of pattern. What's the four hour? Four hours pushing higher. Folks, uh, if any time there were a time to leg into some Bitcoin, I think it's right now. So let's create a new order. Now, let's assuming we have an unlimited, uh, you know, can we buy a full Bitcoin? 27, let's just say, let's say for the hell of it, 10 Bitcoin and just do a market order and see where it takes us. Okay, we'll come back and see how the profits are on that later. And, uh, you know, I've traded margin big, I've had sizes like that before, but not saying you should, you know, typically paper trading, you should, you should trade with numbers you're comfortable with in real money. ETH is looking good as well, though, here. What's, uh, seems we're getting a bit of a rally. Four hour, very bullish on ETH. 
getting a key and a bell. Um, there's there's some there's momentum coming into this market. We can see like this uh, pattern very much. Let's buy some ETH here again, uh, trading paper trading only, and uh, please trade responsibly. So we can come in here and hit create new order, and maybe we'll do five ETH. And just do it at market. See how uh, see how this does. We'll keep track of this. See how we do on these indicators. You can watch this weekly on the uh, YouTube channel for free. Delayed. If you'd like to see these classes live, just go over weekly and get the indicators. You can go over to this uh, crypto mastery dot online. It will redirect you to another URL, so it's just easier to remember. Uh, so you can find out more about these award-winning indicators that we use in all of our trading. One thing we haven't looked at is the uh, dynamic average true range. Let's just see what that's telling us on the four-hour chart. One of our, oops, not that one. And I've, we've got a lot of these experimental indicators that many of, uh, we, we just can't, there's no way to get rid of them. So don't feel that we're holding anything back from you. Oh, this is interesting. So we have uh, the dynamic ATR went uh, bullish back in here as well. Uh, even before the ERI. So this uh, this looks pretty bullish, you guys. I mean, this is a four-hour chart. Let's look at a daily. Daily uh, ETR hasn't flipped yet, but I would keep an eye on that also. And really, we should... Um, well, I'm not going to keep it saved because it changes the candle colors. I don't usually use it on a longer-term basis. But uh, we do like to monitor that. That's another one of the indicators that's included in these. And hopefully you're using all of them. And uh, just as a quick recap on all the ones that are included, we have the volatility index we showed you, the ERI, the dynamic ATR I just showed, trend indicator, that's the key in the bell, the trend strength indicator, the radar, at a glance, our markets in buy or sell mode. If they're all go, if the radar goes all red, time to sell out the market. If it's all green, good time to buy. And the signal line is again part of our four kings, <clears throat> mostly green on this radar. You know, if we get a if we get that weekly start to go green, very bullish. And then, as you know, you can change the settings on these. So uh, let's take a look at the quarterly, the three months, and then uh, I'll actually uh, change this down. So we'll go daily, weekly. The four hour is useful on the lower time frame charts, but on the higher time frame, I like to go out a bit. So daily, weekly. So we have on the monthly and the three month charts, bullish, green. So we have to remember that. Let's get rid of some of these charts that we don't uh, need to watch here. We were watching last week and Solana. Let's see. This is a weekly chart in Bitcoin. Let's look at the monthly real quick. Monthly still looks bullish. We have, well, we're getting a bearish ERI. But a month is, uh, we've got 10 days left here. See, if we push higher, that will go away. And then we have, we'll have, we'll continue with green. We've got green, green, green is go. Uh, and isn't that interesting? We might be, we see the midline on the trend indicator on the monthly starting to turn green. Guys, look what happened back when we went to green key and a bell on the monthly. You better believe when we start seeing that, I'll be pounding the table, get in the markets. All right, everybody, that's all we have time for today. Uh, thanks for your questions and comments. This is Brett uh, from Crypto Mastery and uh, Moonstream. And again, if you want to find out more about our in-depth advanced classes, which are tomorrow, Wednesdays, that's moonstream.io slash M3. We have only a couple spaces left. It's a small, tight-knit group. And you also get to attend these classes live. All right, guys. Thanks very much again. And I'll see you uh, next week. Bye, everyone.